Okay guys, this is the Yeba Pico T1. It's a brand new portable on the go projector. Yeba did send me this and just a caveat, this is a prototype and it's not the final production model that will go out to the public. But this is now released on Indiegogo for crowdfunding. So you can back this if you are interested in buying this. I am so excited to try it out because look at the size of this. Just by looking at it from a distance, everyone would assume this is a power bank, but it's not. This is the projector itself, which I think is incredible. Just look at the design of this. It's very reflective, it's anti-scratch. It's kind of like a glass design, but it has this special coating with the touchscreen buttons just on the top to control the projector. You've got the power button just on the right hand side with the volume controls. Then you also have a small little wheel here for the focus. At the bottom, you have yourself a micro HDMI port with two USB-C ports, one for powering on the projector and one for charging your phone as an additional backup. Then you also have the bulb there just on the front and I just feel like this is an absolute great design. You've got yourself the speakers there at the front as well. For me personally, I'm just surprised at how lightweight this is because it literally doesn't weigh anything, how compact it is. You can literally put this in your pocket and take it with you anywhere. You can put it in your backpack very easily and just store it wherever you like. But not only that, this can also be powered by a power bank. So it can really be portable. So you don't need to use the plug or the cable to attach it in there. If you have a separate power bank that supports PD 3.0, then you just connect this and you can use that to power on the projector and use that essentially with the battery life of your power bank. Let's go ahead and quickly see what else is in this box. And just remember, some of these things may change once this does get released to the public. I'm just a big fan of Yeba products. I reviewed one of their projectors in the past before, which is the Yeba V7 Pro. So in the first accessories box, you have yourself the micro HDMI to HDMI. So you can connect pretty much anything you like. So I'm going to be connecting this to my Apple TV, but you can use it for Fire Stick, Chromecast, whatever it may be, even your laptops. Then you have a mini remote control. Let's see the remote control as well. You have yourself the volume buttons, the power buttons, the back buttons, and the menu control buttons. So very quick and easy. It does come with a battery. You just literally pull out the slot and it will start to work. Then you have this very mini tripod as well, which I think looks great. And essentially this tripod is magnetic ball head because the bottom of this projector, it is magnetic. So you can see here, you can pretty much twist it 360 degrees, angle it however you like. Just the flexibility of positioning it very quickly and easy and then just take it off. I think that's something that's excellent for this type of projector that's very portable, very pocket sized. And it's just so quick and easy to set up. No need to fiddle around with getting the right angles or adding a kickstand or anything like that. Then you have one more accessories box here. So you have yourself the power plug for USB-C. Then you have yourself the USB-C to C cable for the power plug to charge it up. And finally, you have yourself a traditional USB to USB-C as well as a backup. So all plenty of different options to get this connected. I'm really excited to try it out and see how this performs. So I'm gonna set it up with my projector screen and see the projection size on this, but this can also connect via Bluetooth. It supports 2.4G and 5G dual band Wi-Fi, which I think is great. And it's got an inbuilt smart OS as well. So I'm going to start off by running through the smart OS and see some of the features that this contains. So let's go ahead and set it up. Now, one other thing, depending on which package you buy from the Indiegogo listing, you can actually get this very nice carry case for your projector and the accessories that come with it. If you open it up, there's plenty of different slots where you can store the tripod, the cables, and also the projector as well. And this is very convenient to take it with you in your backpack or anywhere else to make it very portable and easy to carry. One other thing that this also benefits from is the ability to power the projector with a power bank. So if you take a look at this power bank, this was included in the package. So you can check out the website in the link below to see which one you can get that includes the power bank as well as the projector and the carry case, the full package. This is actually very similarly sized to the projector itself and it actually weighs more. 
than the projector, which is quite surprising because the projector is super light and it just goes to show how portable and how versatile it is. Now you can use any power bank to power the projector, which is you know a very great option. You just need to make sure your power bank supports PD 3.0 or QC 2.0, which this one does that comes with the package. So let's go ahead and power this on and I'm going to showcase to you guys some of the menu buttons on it, what these do. I will also use the remote control and I will mount it on this tripod and go through some of the key specifications of how this performs, starting off with the Smart OS, which is based on the Google Android platform. Okay, so mounting it on the tripod is super easy because it is magnetic. You can actually twist this 360 degrees and angle it however you like. If possible, try to keep it in line as straight as possible with your screen or your wall where you're projecting it onto because this does have vertical auto keystone correction, which I think is great. In addition to that, it also has automatic screen rotation. So if you did want to maybe mount this the opposite way, then it can rotate the screen automatically, but the focus itself is manual and there's no automatic focus. So I'm going to use this power bank and pull out the USB-C part of the power bank to turn this on and showcase really, you know, how much it can work perfectly well as a wireless projector. So I'm just going to turn it on with the power button on the side. And I am in fact two meters away from the screen, which is the ideal distance for max projection. That will give you maximum around 100 inches, but the closer you get, the more clearer it is. Now I do have a lot of light coming into the room, but I will darken it so you can see the screen a lot clearer. It's starting off with the Yeba logo and I will cycle through with using the remote control. Okay, so I've just made it a little bit darker. Now you can see this is the homepage for Smart OS. It has done the vertical keystone correction automatically. I've now adjusted the manual focus to make it very sharp and very clear. This is about two meters away and they say it's ideally the max projection size should be 100 inches around six and a half feet away from your screen but you can go as close as to 30 centimeters and it will give you more of a smaller and more sharper projection the closer you are to the wall but I think this is quite a decent size right now I have it at around 70 inches so for me that's working absolutely fine if I cycle through you can set some favorite apps on the smart OS here if you go into apps you'll have a bunch of apps that you can watch content on if you go into any, it will ask you to download it from the Google Play Store. So Netflix, for example, is 25 megabyte download and I can go ahead and download it directly from here. You can also see a bunch of recommended movies to watch from any of the apps that you have downloaded onto the system. You can play back music. You can add your own media and play that back directly from the projector. eShare, this is something where you can use your own wireless mouse or keyboard and then essentially use this as your remote working screen so you can attach it with your laptop by going to a certain link in the browser. If you go into settings, you can find here settings around your Wi-Fi. You can add Bluetooth devices, change the language. If you go into projection, you can change the mode, the keystone correction and adjust the brightness levels. If you go into other, this is where you can adjust some of the application settings. So if I go into that, here you can go into specific apps that you've downloaded and just adjust the settings. These are very much just like Android app settings that you may find on Android phones. And you can also do a factory reset if you ever need to do that. Date and time and a little bit about the device. So it's very straightforward and it's very clean. I'm super happy how this is working. If I wanted to use the projector, using that button in the middle of the projector menu, it's actually a mouse pad. You can see, obviously the projector screen is shaking a little bit as I'm pressing against the projector itself. But if you wanted to use this manually, then you can go directly to any of the items by using the mouse. I generally wouldn't use this because you can see the screen is jumping around a little bit as I'm pressing lightly on the projector itself. But if you wanted to use this to highlight anything specifically that you can't use with your remote control, then that is an option there. Now that you've seen the Smart OS, just a brief information about some of the specs. This is a DLP display and it has 110 lumens of brightness, which is a decent amount for a projector of this size. If I just show you how clear this gets, the closer I get to the screen. And of course you have to manually readjust the focus 
every time you do get closer. I would say maybe this is the closest recommended point, which is around 30, 40 centimeters away. And then the further back I go, it can go pretty large, but I'm going to manually adjust the focus as I'm going. I would say this is around the 100 inches. So it's still pretty clear, but I wouldn't say it's the sharpest. I would say 80, 70 inches is probably the most ideal size, which this one is where I'm placing it currently. And if I switch this upside down, you can see it's auto rotated. And you can see how responsive that is, how quickly it does it. So I think that is a very great selling point on that front. And then finally, the lamp life inside this projector gives you over 30,000 hours of its lifespan. Okay, demo time. I'm now going to be playing a sample demo that has a variety of different color ranges. And also I'm going to be trying to see how the sound output is from the internal speakers of the projector. Because it is very pocket sized, I'm quite impressed of how loud it gets. So I'm going to put the volume up at various stages throughout this demo video and let me know what you guys think of the quality. Okay, you guys saw that that was a very detailed demo. I was pretty happy with the quality of the video, given that it is a very tiny and portable projector and it does have just 110 lumens of brightness. I still think when you have a very dark room, things come out very clear and I can see all of the details in the video quality. And even with the audio, it was quite loud for the size of the speakers. So for me, I was personally that impressed and I wouldn't need to go to all the way 100 max volume just to be able to hear anything on screen because for me, standing in front of the projector, that was still pretty loud. So do remember that how you view it and how you hear the demo might be slightly different to how I see it in person standing in front of it, but hopefully that gave you a clear idea of the capabilities and the quality of this projector as well. But not just that, you can have a full setup like this. So I've got the micro HDMI connected to my Apple TV box here, which I can then use to play my content directly from that. Then I've got my white cable there in the middle to power on the projector. That's one of my own cables. And then the last cable here is to charge up my phone at the same time with the other USB-C port. So this is the USB-C to C cable that came inside the Pico T1 box. So you can see it's actually charging. So this is a full setup and it is very tiny, it's portable and it doesn't take up so much space. So now I'm going to showcase how to switch over to use Apple TV via the HDMI port. So on the screen, go over to source, go up and select HDMI. And there we go, Apple TV is now on. So now we can very easily browse Apple TV apps and use this. It's very responsive, it's very easy. And now I'm using my Apple TV remote instead of the Pico T1 remote. So 
very quick and convenient way to connect any of your external devices so whether that's an amazon fire stick for example or chromecast apple tv whatever it may be there's plenty of options to utilize this tiny portable projector but what's great is if you do visit friends and families you go to the office quite often and you just want to have a larger screen to show content to people whether that's for work for business for pleasure movies tv shows i feel like this is the ultimate solution and i'm super happy with this I'm going to be keeping it in the little carry case and I'll take it everywhere I need to go and show content and watch content with other people because it can literally be played anywhere you'd like and that for me is one of the biggest selling points of this new projector. So that's pretty much it guys, hopefully you found that review useful. This is the Yeba Pico T1, take a look at the link in the description for the Indiegogo page for this. Have a look at the latest pricing information. If you are interested in this, then try and grab yourself a super early bird deal and see what package you can get with some of the accessories. For me personally, I'm so happy with this. Even when it is a little bit brighter in the room, it still is pretty clear and I'm impressed with the picture quality. Even if you don't want to listen to the audio directly from the speakers inside this, then you can use Bluetooth, connect your own headphones and just listen directly to the audio from your headset, which is probably what I'll do most of the time when I am using this to watch some content. If you guys have any other questions about the Yeager Pico T1, drop a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this review and you like the look of this projector and its capabilities, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. I've got plenty of tech gadget reviews coming out in the near future with really cool gadgets like this one. And I'll add this to my projector playlist amongst all of the other projector reviews I've done in the past. So make sure to check those out as well. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.